and no, I keep saying the Austin 7 is finished, finished enough to get it registered at least. Um, it's almost, almost completely finished now. So I made up the number plate bracket and painted it and the little rubber rear reflectors turned up. Um, I found somewhere locally that actually sold these. They sold them in two parts. So you bought the reflectors separate to the rubber bases. And these are those Lucas RER2 pattern uh, rear reflectors with the flexible rubber base and they're designed to mount on a sloped surface like that. So they seem to work fairly well. Um, the only thing I'm waiting for now before I can actually get it registered is the rear number plate needs to be illuminated. So I'm actually getting some little LED style um, lights. Uh, they, they use them on motorcycles a lot. And it's actually a, an LED and a bolt combined. So these are the holes that the number plate bolts to. They will just go in there and they'll illuminate the number plate. And I'm just going to run, because they're LEDs, they won't need a lot of current. Um, so I can run some, some small wires up under here, either into the back of this lamp and wire into that, or through into the boot, through the same hole that the, the cable for this lamp goes through. And in here, there's the, uh, the Lucas style connectors for the wiring loom. So it can just plug straight into that. There should, hopefully there's a good enough earth that I can just run one wire rather than having to run a, a, a power and a ground. The other thing I've been playing with is, uh, this is the, the speedometer on the car. And if we get close to it, you can see that's actually in miles per hour. And that works. Um, I don't know if it's accurate or not though. It's, it's cable driven, so as long as the ratios and the gears are all correct, it should be fine. Uh, it does depend a little bit on tyre size and things like that of course, but I want to be able to check that. And of course I can use the GPS on my phone to, to check if it's correct, but because electronics is a hobby of mine, um, actually that's not fair, I've, I've done electronics for years and years and years, ever since I was a teenager, and I've done jobs doing electronics and actually made a living at it, so I'm not going to be claim to be a professional, but I've done a lot in my time. Um, so you can buy little GPS modules online fairly cheaply, um, but instead I just made my own. So this is the little box I made. So inside here there's a Arduino Nano microprocessor. There's a little, uh, I think it's a Neo 6 GPS module and antenna, a little LED display, and a rechargeable battery just a 18650 cell and it's not going to work now because we're indoors but that's just what it shows when it's looking for satellites. Um, this basically just sits here and it just outputs the GPS speed. The two switches, one is a power switch just on and off. Uh, the second one's kind of a multifunction switch so the way this one works is if you click it down and back up again quickly, it'll change the units between miles per hour and kilometers per hour. If you hold it down, it'll show you the uh, highest recorded speed since you've turned it on. So that'll just give you the maximum value. And it'll show that in whatever units it's set to at the current time. And if you leave it down for more than five seconds, it'll reset that um, maximum speed. Uh, that's obviously showing zero at the moment because um, it, it hasn't been moving. So it does take it a little while to get a fix. I did replace the rechargeable battery on the GPS module, but I'm not entirely convinced that's working properly. So GPS, when it starts up, uh, it has to work out where all the satellites are. So when it's receiving the signals from them, it, it needs to know approximately where they are and then from the information it receives from the satellite, it, it slowly gets a better and better fix. And when you first 
turn them on like this, it has to do what's called a cold start. And when it does a cold start, it has to look up from its internal memory where it thinks the satellites are given the current time and date. And it sort of improves it from there. That can take quite a long time to happen, um, minutes even. Uh, most modules have built-in memory, so once it's actually found a fix, it'll, it'll remember where it last was, so that the next time you turn it on and start it up, it'll do a warm start, and getting a, 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 an initial fix should be a lot quicker. So this little module, uh, I have tested it out before I put it in the box. I had it all on a breadboard, and I've actually tried it out in the car, and it's pretty accurate. Uh, GPS speed is usually more accurate because the the time signal from GPS is ultra accurate. If you've got a fix with more than three satellites, uh, especially if you've got four or more, you get a very, very accurate time signal, which is needed for the whole system to work. The position can vary a little bit, so it sort of drifts around. Um, way back in the early days of GPS, they had a thing called selective availability, which meant the um, commercial grade GPS receivers were not as accurate as the military ones. They, they, there's actually a, a setting they can change, which changes the accuracy of the receivers. And um, that was removed quite some time ago. So the domestic GPS receivers became as accurate as the military ones, although I, I suspect the military are using different technologies these days. Um, but the position can drift a little bit, but the speed should always be fairly accurate because you, you don't need to know exactly where you are to get an accurate speed measurement. You just need to know, um, you just need the difference between multiple locations. So even if the locations themselves aren't exactly right, as long as the distances between them are the same, your speed's going to be correct. So, or rather, the, the velocity will be correct. So... Uh, it's just a little fun little gadget. I haven't done any full-on electronic-y type stuff for a little while. I've been too busy doing cars and Enigma machines and things like that. So that was just a little project I did yesterday just to put it in the little box. I um, 3D printed the the bezel and the little cover that goes over the patch antenna. So I might take this outside and see if it'll get a fix and see how well it works. So I'm sort of filming this a little bit backwards. Um, I haven't actually finished this GPS unit yet, but this is what it looks like uh, in pieces, just so we can see what's actually inside there. So the actual GPS module itself is this thing. And uh, these are quite cheap. And basically you just put power to them, and then there's a clock and data line. And you just use a microprocessor to read the, the data that comes out of them. These things haven't really changed for a long, long time. Um, I worked on some of the first in-car um, portable GPS units a long, long time ago. And the GPS modules basically still spit out the same uh, ASCII data stream that they used to. They always did. I think the modules now can read more satellites and get more... Um, information but the the speed of them is still pretty slow so you get an update every second um, this is just the antenna for the gps unit and inside here i also have the little led module just four digit led and the arduino uh, which is a nano i think i can't re actually remember um, the arduino board is on the back there and i've got a little piece of breadboard on the back just to make the wiring easier. There's a 18650 lithium ion cell and there's a charging protection board hot glued to the side of that. There's just a micro USB input socket to charge it. And then I've got a uh, inside there if we can see it. Uh, that's a little uh, boost converter. So that steps up the the 3.7 to 4 volts from the, the lithium ion cell up to the 5 volts that I need for the Arduino and the LED and the GPS module. And then there's just a couple of little 
toggle switches on there. One is simply the power and the other one I use for um, changing the units from miles per hour to kilometers per hour and for displaying the, 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 the maximum speed um, and then clearing that maximum speed. So I was going to put all of this into a bigger box and then I decided to try and cram it into as smaller a case as I could. So it does all fit in there. The reason this isn't finished at the moment is because I need to 3D print uh, some little bezels. One for the, the top here because the antenna actually sits up a little high so there's going to be a little cover over it. And one that goes around the, the LEDs to um, hold them in place and make it easier to see. But my 3D printer is currently having a sulk I think. Um, I've swapped the filament over from the nylon I was using to print the, the change gears for the lathe and I've gone back to PLA and it's just not printing well for some reason. Um, I suspect the extruder needs a good clean out. The whole hot end probably needs a good clean. Uh, I'm not sure if there's still nylon inside there or, or exactly what's going on there. Um, so I'll probably have to strip all that down, clean it up and then I can print the little parts I need. But I'll reassemble this so it's all in place and you can see it does all fit in the box. So obviously I'm outside and this now has a fix so that took about a minute or two I think for it to get a fix. I uh, just realized that cat's staring at me again. But now this has a fix if we walk with it. So that's currently showing the speed in miles per hour. For miles per hour I bring up the two little dots in the middle of the display. Uh, figuring it's an Austin 7, chances are it's not going to go more than 99 miles an hour. So to change the units, you, you flick that down quickly. And then now showing kilometers so the maximum speed display if you hold that down it'll just show you the maximum uh, it's lost its fix temporarily after it loses a fix it can be a bit slow to resettle down so if we look at the maximum change the units you can look at the maximum in miles per hour too and if you leave it down it'll clear it back to zero And that's basically it. So for charging it there's just a little USB micro socket on the bottom. Uh, there's no indication if it's, if it's charged or not but I use a little USB power monitor thing in series with the charger and that'll show you when the charging current drops to zero and you know it's fully charged. The battery protection circuit inside there stops it overcharging anyway. Uh, the only thing I have to do is figure out how I'm going to mount it in the car I guess. I don't want it to be permanent it's just going to be there long enough for me to um, to know if the speedo is accurate or not and then I can once I know what the speedo is showing me I don't care if it's miles per hour or kilometers per hour you just know what the right speed is. So when putting together that little film I noticed there was a bug in my software um, people often ask me what I do professionally, what my actual job is, and I am a software engineer, a test engineer, so I specialize in writing software that tests software, basically. Um, so I'm a software guy, not a hardware guy. Um, so for there to be a bug in there is kind of unacceptable for me, really. And as soon as I saw what was happening, I knew exactly what the bug was. So this is kind of a good opportunity to show how you go about programming the little microcontroller in here and um, fixing that bug. So this is the, the software, the Arduino IDE. Um, I won't go through it all, but 
the reason for the bug was um, when the little toggle switch is down to show the maximum speed, you don't want to be displaying the actual GPS speed. And that's what was happening. So even though the switch was down, the display was flicking between showing your maximum speed and your current measured speed. So to fix that, um, I just needed a very simple change, which is in here. So in here it checks to see if the switch is down, and if it's not, it'll display the speed. Um, that's all that does. Uh, elsewhere in the code, it does the displaying of the, the maximum speed. So with that change in there, we should be able to compile this, make sure it compiles. Uh, the microcontroller is an Arduino Nano, and then we just hit that, and that should upload it to the microcontroller. So that's being programmed now. And then off it goes. Uh, interestingly, it's actually receiving a signal in here, even though I'm indoors, I'm close enough to the window that it's, it's kind of working there. So that should all be good. Um, often playing around with these kind of electronics, this sort of stuff, I use all sorts of different microcontrollers for things. So this was the version that was built up on the breadboard. You can see there's a nano in there. Um, this is another variant of nano. Another one there. Uh, that's a little RF thing. Here we go. Uh, that's yet another little microcontroller. I'm not even sure what I was using that one for. Uh, so I have all sorts of these things around that I play with for all sorts of different bits and pieces and inventions and things and there's, there's stuff everywhere. So I'm going to reassemble this now and I'll test it um, because that's what I'm doing. I'm a, I'm a tester and hopefully now that should be good.